for me, normal is just someone's anger that you're doing something that they can't or that they, they wish they could do. Hello and welcome to the new podcast with me, Belisi. I'm an independent artist, a music producer and writer. And on this episode, I wanted to talk about going against the grain and what it means going against what is deemed the normal life. And so I got to start with that nasty, horrible word, normal. I fucking hate that word. For me, normal is just someone's anger that you're doing something that they can't or that they they wish they could do. And so they hold a resentment towards you and you end up losing, you know, friends over this and family members because they hate it that you're doing this, you know, and I've seen it. And so it's like I said in the first episode, to do something like this, to go against the norm or to be an entrepreneur, to be an independent artist, you've got to have 100% conviction and belief that this is the right path for you because it's going to be hard. You know, you're fighting against something that in some people's minds has stood for centuries. You know, you can't do that. You can't go against the norm. And so you've really got to believe it because it's a tough road. You know, it's a great road, but it's tough. And I've always had that that little voice in the back of my head telling me that you, you're on the wrong path, you know, you, you, there's something out there for you. And it, it kept on years and years and years. And I'm sure a lot of you out there have this voice, you know, this is not my life, you know, you're waking up at seven every day and doing this, blah, blah, blah. Some people are really happy doing that. That's because it's their path. But if you're not and you're getting this voice again and again and again and again and again, like I did, you know, it's time to wake up and do something about it. And so I did. I had a great life. You know, I had a great job and great what I thought, you know, good friends at the time. But I wasn't content. You know, I had to change. I had to go for my dream, my fate, my truth. And like I've said before, and I say it again and again, my personal legend. And so I left a, a very good job. I was a paramedic at the time and I worked damn hard to be a paramedic. But I wasn't happy. It, it was not fulfilling me. And 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 so I, I turned my back on it. You know, I walked away from that mon money and into a vocation that pays pretty much zero, you know, especially when you're starting out. And any small business, you know, any entre entrepreneur that when you're starting out, you know, payday is a long way off. It may be years. It may be tens of years. You know, that monthly wage now is gone. You've you, that, you've said goodbye to that now. You know, and uh, you know, I walked away from from people, from friends that couldn't understand my decision. You know, I've never seen them again. And some family members, you know, you you never see them again because they just can't understand what you're doing. You're going against this normal. You know, they see it as ludicrous. It's dangerous, really, in, in some ways, you know. So I left that place. I left my job. I even left the town and the country, you know, as it was just, it, it had nothing to off offer me. as a siren going past. It had nothing to offer me. And so, you know, I had to do it. I had to chase that dream, move on, turn my back on that normal life. And of course, you know, I was happy. I knew that I was heading in the right place, but you know, fuck me, was I full of fear? Of course I was, you know? And if you're not, then, you know, you've got to question your sanity because you've got to have a little bit of fear there and a little bit of trepidation, you know, that is this right? And that's good. It's good to have those nerves, you know, and, and that's all they are. It's just a bit of stage fright and you just got to keep pushing through it. And there are loads of tales like mine, especially nowadays with social media. You know, you see on your shorts and on your reels and on TikTok, you know, people are doing it all the time and there's great motivational speakers out there, like the great Gary V. you know, he's telling you all the time, do it. And he's right, you know, you should. And I did. And you would think that when you make this decision, you know, you're going to 
go, you know, you're going to climb that mountain, you're going to do something. You think your friends around you or your family will be like, yeah, buddy, this is amazing. This is a good idea. Uh, but th that's, uh, that's rarely the case. And it certainly wasn't, you know, in my situation. If it isn't yours, fantastic. And if it's not, then, you know, th that's okay. But that is why a lot of people will fail because they listen to it and they'll be like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't fight the norm. Yeah, I'll just do this, you know, and then they do it. And and to be honest, I did, you know, I did it for maybe another 10 years and then another 10 years, you know, and it's only maybe seven years ago that I did make that decision, you know, and I was already in my 40s when I made that decision. So just because you don't make it in your 20s or when you're 18, that's OK. As long as you make it that, you know, one day, make that decision, decision and go with it. I remember when I was 18, I was working in a in a factory in the, my hometown in Swindon. And I wasn't particularly happy there, but it, it was just a job. But I had these dreams. I, I knew that there was something more out there for me. And that little voice, you know, all the time. And I remember chatting to this guy, and it's, it stayed with me all my life, this conversation we had. And he wasn't particularly a horrible person or anything. Um, and I told him about my aspirations and my dreams. And he said, and I never forget what he said. He said, oh, you're one of those guys, are you? And at first I was like, well, you know, what do you mean I'm one of those guys? And he went on to his, oh, you're a searcher, you're a dreamer. He said, just get real, you know, that's all make-believe. Just get on with your job. You know, and at the time it really pissed me off. But looking back, you know, he, I think he was just bitter that in his own life he couldn't do anything. And so... You know, he wanted to take it out on me. And so just to answer his question, you bet your fucking ass, I am one of those guys. And I am searching and I am going for my dream. So uh, thank you. In my journey, I have found that there's three kinds of people that you're going to meet when you're pursuing your dreams or that radical lifestyle and going against the norm. And the first one you have is what I would call the keeper. And, and they're the ones that will follow you into a fucking volcano. You know, there's shit flying everywhere. There's fucking flames, fire and yeah, <laughs> lava. And, and they're behind you going, yeah, let's go. This is great. You know, they're the keepers. And if you're lucky enough to have a few of those in your life, you are set. You're, you're ahead of the game. Now, I'm lucky to have a few of those, but, you know, I can count them on one hand. Some of you out there won't have any of them, and that's okay, you know, you will meet them along the way. You will find them. But if you've got them in the moment, they are keepers. Keep them close. They will fuel you, fuel you on your shitty days, you know, keep them. The next type of person I refer to as the sponges. And I call them this is because their lives are just soaked in defeat. You know, they're news lovers, they're gossips. They love to talk about death, war, poverty. You know, the skies are always cloudy and the sea's always too wet. You, you know those guys. I'm sure you've, you've met some of them. And they always have so much fear in their life that when you tell them your plans or that, you know, you're turning your back on the norm and you, you're, you're going for your dreams, you know, they will only see the worst case scenario. You know, what if you don't make an, enough money? You know, how will you eat? So you might lose your house or your car or you might die, you know. <laughs> and they can't see any good in, in that situation. And so they will try to bring you back down with them. And unfortunately, they are no good for your journey. Um, and sometimes they will be the ones that are closest to you, you know, and it, it, in a way they just don't want to lose you and they're just, they're just scared for you. And so my advice and what I've had to do is keep your distance from these people, you know. Don't cut them out because some of them will be too close to do that maybe. But, you know, they certainly don't see them on a day-to-day -day basis because they're, they're going to bring you back down. They're no good for your journey. The last group are the poison. Now, this group would just laugh at your plans. They're so bitter within their own existence that they cannot see anyone else succeed. They don't want anyone else to succeed. They haven't succeeded, so they want you right sat next to them with them. You know, they, they don't want to see you go on and, re, you know, make your dreams come true. They don't want it. And these people, the poison, 
sometimes are the hardest to see because they can appear like, certainly in my case, as your closest friends, your closest alloys. Because when you're, when you're in that normal life, you know, and you're floating along, they're loving it because everything's on that, you know, plain playing field and they like that. It's all good. It's only until you start to change and then their true colors come out. So your true colors have come out now, you know, and so do theirs. And, and theirs are not as nice and they're certainly not bright. So they will try and bring you back down. You know, I've had instances in my past where I've had very, very close relationship, relationships. And sometimes I think that they're actually my best friends, you know, until I change, <laughs> until I start telling them of my dreams and that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out of here, I'm gone, you know, we can still be mates or whatever, but they don't want any of that, you know, and then that's when the poison comes out. Now, needless to say, these people must go. They are no good for you. And you may find that your own ego, you know, that little voice, that inner voice inside you, is a mixture of these three things. You know, you have the keeper in there going, yeah, let's do this. This is fucking amazing, you know. You have the sponge in there that's going, ooh, I don't know, we might die, you know. And then you got the poison saying, fuck this, stay grounded, son. And you've got to... <laughs> you got to know when to listen and when to bin, you know, these voices. You know, there's, say, say you're stood on a cliffside, you know, because these voices are there for you. They're there to help you, but they can also ground you and take you away from your dreams. So you've got to know when to tune in and when to tune out. You know, you're stood at a, a cliffside and you're about to jump. You're about to jump into your future and your ego, your inner voice is screaming, do not jump, you know, do not jump. And he's right. Don't jump. Of course you shouldn't jump. Who would leap off the side of a cliff? But then you say, well, I have this shoot. You know, I packed this shoot. I've been practicing for years for this. I've done all my research necessary. I've trained and I'm trained and I've trained for this day. I am ready. And so you bin those voices and you jump. And when you do, don't close your eyes. Take it all in. Take that journey in as you jump, as you leap off that cliff, you know. Enjoy it and take in every single moment. And this applies to when you're on your way, on your journey, on the, your way to greatness, to your goals, to your personal legend. Make sure that along the way you're in enjoying every moment and every high, you know. Of course, you're heading somewhere and the goal always needs to be there, you know, the destination. But don't miss that amazing middle. You know, that could be the best, the best that it could be, you know. And just think of that base jumper that's on that cliff, you know, they're just about to jump and they jump off. You know, they don't close their eyes. They enjoy every single minute all the way down. And once they've reached their destination, you know, and they're on the floor, what do they do? They wrap the chute and they go back up and they jump off again. So make sure you enjoy that middle when you're on, on your way, on your journey. So how do you deal with life against the norm or how, did I, how do I deal with it? You know, and this is where our strength really shines. This is the place where we were meant to be. All our lives have been for this moment to achieve, you know? We've had that voice screaming at us for years and we're finally doing it. So be happy, be proud, and, and, you know, and go, out, go at it, move on. And you have to own that feeling and that person, become that person now. That, that is you, that it, uh, it is us now, you know? Picture that new life. And, and most of all, just be so proud, you know, be proud of that person, the person that said, fuck it, I'm better than that. I'm going there and I'm, I'll see you later. I'm doing it. And saying all that, you, you have to have integrity and you still got to be good, you know, be a good, a good person. And that can be hard sometimes when, especially when you're dealing with, uh, you know, not so much the sponges, but the poison, you know, you've got to remain remain good, be be the good person in this. And, you know, although you've got to remove these certain people in your life, you know, don't become bitter about them. They're the one that are bitter, so don't don't become their equal, you know. It's better that you, you know, you have, like I said, you have integrity and you rise above it. 
and you know you leave the people behind but who knows in the future you may cross paths again they may have had a realization you know and you may see them as you're crossing a path one day and you go hey how you doing oh you were so right you know and you become allies again so just be open you know and and kind always be kind be nice and after the initial fuck you i'm doing this you then have to deal with living that life and i can tell you that Doing what I do now is the hardest job I've ever had. And that's, you know, I was a paramedic for 10 years dealing with all kinds of nasty, crazy stuff. This is by far the hardest job. It's the best job I've ever had, but it's hard. You know, chasing down your, your dreams, your fate, your personal legend, as I've said before, is all consuming. It's everything. And you really have to become that. You know, you really do to achieve such greatness. You know, if you're starting out for small business or whatever and you want it to be huge, it, it has to be everything. It is all consuming. And this is why it's not for everybody. You know, like I said before about losing people, it is so true. You know, I have very, very, very few friends now and only a select number of family members that are sort of still with me and believe in me, you know, because the rest had to stay in that normal life, that normal existence. They couldn't, they couldn't come with me on this journey because they, to them, it was so alien. It was, you know, watching a maniac at work, you know. <laughs> and of course, I've got contacts and people that I may associate with now and then. But I think to do this, you do have to stay kind of selfish you know the the number one goal of the day is to uh, is to work you know because you, you're building this this empire you've got to work 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 if you're turning your back on the normal life you don't want the nine to five anymore then it's it's 24 7 that's the alternative you know and for me it's all about art and creation and you know, this is where I said it's selfish and it's the way I feel all the time. If I'm not creating or working, I feel like I'm wasting time. And something we have to deal with as well is meeting people, family members, new acquaintances, or, you know, whatever you go around to a friend's house, you're meeting new people or, or whatever. And they, they ask the question, well, what do you do for a living? And it can be pretty hard when you've you know you start especially when you're starting out as an entrepreneur or you you, you know your small business or independent artist you know what, what do you say or you know oh, I'll go into a, I make music in a bedroom you know they think you do what they think you're off fucking head so you have to own that as well you've got to believe in it you know no I, I'm an independent artist I I create music you may have heard of me you might have a look on Spotify there's all my songs you know, own it, be proud of it. And you will get the, I hate this word really, the haters, you know, and that they won't understand what you're doing. And recently, um, somebody was talking about me and referred to me as unemployed and living on the breadline and that I should get a job. And at first it was really upsetting to hear this, this small mindedness, you know, but then I thought, well, it's just the poison. You know, you're still meeting the poison, even if I, I didn't meet him face to face. I just heard about it. But the poison is still out there. And, you know, then you sit back and you think, well, I'm not on the breadline. So, you know, I'm doing really well. I am successful. And I'm more importantly than that. You know, this is my fate. I'm on the right line. So then it comes back to being proud of what you're doing. And then you've got to think of their life. And I do think of that. You know, I do think of the poison that you know, they're just obviously really unhappy in their existence that they have to pick on mine. You know, maybe they're looking at me or what my family do and think, well, how can you do that? How can you afford to do that? How are you able to go here and go there and make all this music or do whatever? And I can't. So I think that it's just a little bit of frustration. And so that's why they're nasty. So you just got to take those comments on the chin. And something else I have to deal with, or I have dealt with before, and you may have to as well when you're starting out in business, is the guilt. And, you know, some days that, we, certainly me, I can feel guilty that I'm not living the normal life. You know, I'm not part of the pack anymore. I'm not doing the nine to five. And especially, you know, at the start, with small businesses and entrepreneurs and certainly independent artists, there's no money you know, money's not coming in, you know, you don't have that weekly wage. 
And and so there is some guilt there, especially if you've got other family members that are helping you out as well. But then you're a team, you know, you're building it together. It is a small, small business. And later on, you'll certainly pay them back and prove everybody else wrong. But that guilt, it certainly for me was something I did have to deal with. But what helps me is that, you know, I, th I believe I'm making life better, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not part of the herd anymore. I'm doing something more than that. I'm putting something back into the world. So that's how I got, got over that guilt feeling. You know, what I'm creating every single day is putting something out there. And even if it's just a positive at attitude, even now just talking to you, you know, through this podcast, you know, that's some positivity. So that's sending positive vibes to the world, you know, throughout the universe that somebody else can pick up on. And I'm a great believer in that. And you're never really alone on this journey. You know, you will have some of you out there will have the keepers, you know, or, you know, close ones with you. And you've also, you know, you've got the social, so you start networking. And what I do as well is I read. And there's three books that are my, my sort of three go-to books. And the first one is I've spoke about before, and I speak about it all the time. And in the next podcast to come, no doubt I will again, you know, about my personal legend and whatnot. And, and so that is The Alchemist by Paolo Colio. And although it's a novel, there's so much truth in that book, uh, making it my all-time favorite read. So, so read that book, keep that on the list. And the next one is The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Now, this is a fantastic book. This is my go-to book. And not just on down days, although it does help, but if I'm needing, you know, a little bit of a push or I've got a big project coming up, that is my go-to book. It's fantastic. Um, it's very religious. I am religious, so it works for me. Um, so it may, it may not work for you, but if you, you know, if you have an open mind, I think it's a fantastic book and it can really lift you up and give you loads of little coping mechanisms in there. And it just opens your, your, your eyes to the universe. So uh, put that all on the list. And the last one is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Uh, Stephen Pressfield is a, a writer. He wrote uh, The Legend of Bhagavans, which is a great, uh, a great book and a great movie. And although this book is sort of aimed at artists, and obviously uh, Stephen Pressfield is a writer, it can apply to anyone that's sort of going against the grain, going against that normal life. And something he states in the book, which I love and I take it with me all the time, is that we as entrepreneurs, as artists, are living the normal life. This was the way life was meant to be lived, you know? Not that nine to five bollocks, never seeing anywhere, never enjoying life, never playing. You know, at the end of the day, we're all kids. We're meant to be playing. So, you know, we should be out there playing. And so I hope you enjoyed this episode and it's helped you with your journey. Please subscribe to the podcast and let me know any ventures or dreams that you're, you're pursuing at the moment and how they're working out for you. And uh, let's do this together. Please follow me on my socials and check out my music on Spotify and see what my normal life is about. And so be something. Be happy, be proud, and most of all, be fucking alive. See you next time. Everyone likes me, it's just me, the leasing.